live from the sewers, this is the Turtle Power Podcast. This is your audio source for all the news, reviews, and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now join your hosts, Brian, Alex, and Darby. Now it's time for the Turtle Power Podcast. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the, uh, I don't even know what episode this is. Uh, Can I just reiterate again how much I love that new intro? Thank you, thank you. It, it just makes me want to booyaka sha all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrible. Um, thanks again uh, for uh, tuning in to the Turtle Power Podcast. Yes, this is uh, Ryan, and uh, we've got Darby on the line. Bossa Nova. And uh, Alex will be joining us momentarily. Uh, but we do have a uh, special guest with us for this very special episode of the Turtle Power Podcast, uh, an episode that we've been uh, just looking forward to doing for so long. Uh, this is going to be our video game special, and uh, what better way to to have a, a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game special than to have a video game expert uh, come on the show? And uh, I, Mitch, I'll, I'll tell you this story. I uh, I, uh, I tweeted. You know, I, I, I'm a big fan of the uh, the various uh IGN podcasts and I knew at one point that I had heard in one of the many I, I can't remember if it was Game Scoop or uh or Beyond or Turtles uh, seem to come up a lot on Game Scoop. Yeah, they do. And uh I, I I knew that there was that somebody was a, a big turtle fan at <laughs> IGN. And so I, I sent a couple tweets out and every single person replied Mitchie D. Mitchie D's a Yeah. Man. <laughs> so we Mitch Dyer right. from uh, IGN, uh, welcome to the Turtle Power Podcast. Well, Darby stole all the catchphrases, so hi. That's my catchphrase. <laughs> I stole one catchphrase. It's just one. <laughs> you got Booyakasha. No, got, no. Uh, Bossa Nova's mine. Bossa I just, Nova's there. I just want to Booyakasha all over the place when, <laughs> when I hear that new intro of ours. I'm just so excited about it. Oh, goodness. Well, um, Gungola. <laughs> Thanks again for uh, for coming on to the show. Um, uh, to start with, uh, uh, for for uh, for any of our listeners uh, that don't know of your uh, immense greatness, uh, would you mind uh, <laughs> um, uh, just uh, uh-huh. letting everybody know a little bit about yourself? Uh, my immense greatness is that I write about video games for IGN dot com. Uh, that's a video game website where we write about video games. I host the podcast, Locked Podcast, with my uh, executive editor over there. I appear on all sorts of videos and other podcasts there. Um, fun fact, I'm Canadian. I love Ninja Turtles. Uh, I bring up Far Cry 2 and TMNT anytime I can. And that's kind of just the, the mention in, in a nutshell, I guess. Boom. That just happened, everybody. Wow. <laughs> I didn't um, know Mitch was Canadian. We're gonna have yes, to take a no, drink every I, time. No, I actually had day. a question for you about your. Um, it, no, no, no. It's every time I let the uh, the uh, boots slip out. <laughs> a boot I went home for Christmas and I could hear it so clearly in a way that I never could. Now that I've been living in the states for like a year, I can hear yeah. the the Canadian accent in everybody in my family now. Just uh, up there enjoying the poutine and and. Oh my god. I, no joke. I made poutine for lunch yesterday because I refuse to let it go. <laughs> I'm bringing it here. Uh, bring, well, yeah, you wouldn't be bringing it back. It's it's bringing it here. When I get fired and I have to leave the country, I'm just gonna like open up a sneaky poutine restaurant here in the bay. <laughs> nice, excellent, excellent. Well, um, 
I did have a question about your your Canadianness. Okay. Um, did uh, did you have uh, or have you learned of any sort of of differences that uh, Canadian audiences were were presented versus uh, American audiences with some of the earlier incarnations of the turtles, um, or was it pretty much the, the same? What we got? No, here I mean, aside from maybe like timing on air. It all seemed pretty similar. I mean, I was super young. I'm 25, so uh, 24. Um, so it would have been, I was way too young when it was airing to like notice anything about the specifics of it. But in general, it seems like the, the 80s show seemed to be the exact same. Like we didn't have the, the hero turtle stuff that they got right. in the UK. Like there was none of that weird censorship stuff. As far as I know. Well, so, so how did you become a, a, a Turtles fan? Was it from the original series? I'm pretty sure that the, my first exposure was TMNT 2 in the arcade, oh. um, which would eventually come to the NES. Mm -hmm. And I think that was my first exposure, which led me to go, hey, Mom, this is pretty cool. <laughs> and she just kind of supported the endeavor with cartoons and toys and movies. Absolutely. Nice. So uh, that's that's interesting. That's, so that was actually the video games that brought you into the Turtles. Yeah, uh, I, I'm pretty sure. Oh, we could call my mom and ask for more specifics. <laughs> Add her to the call. Um, well, what about uh, your favorite character? Do you do you have a favorite character? It doesn't even necessarily have to be a turtle. Oh no! no well, ooh, wow! I never even thought about the possibility that it wasn't Raphael. Oh, okay. Oh God! There's two of them against me. <laughs> How, oh God! Okay, so I mean, you're really upset that it's Raphael. So I have to assume that you're a Michelangelo fan. No, 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 no. no <laughs> okay. Donatello is my guy, but I mean, you got into the turtles because of the video games. How could Raph possibly be your favorite? Right? Raphael sucks. He's the worst in the video games. So <laughs> he be your like? Is it like a pity like? Like oh, oh come Raph, on now, I don't like him because he's so horrible in these games. My best friend from back home, who is also like I, I met him in elementary school and we connected over Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles. His favorite's always been Donatello, and we've argued about it for you know a decade about who's better. And there was a point last year where I can't, I honestly can't remember what it, the, the, the scientific experiment that we even did was, but we decided here's this formula. Here's how we determine who is the best turtle, not just our favorite. And somehow over this oh, formula ended up deciding that Donatello is the best Ninja Turtle. So objectively, <laughs> I, that's what you want to Oh, don't you I don't really you really don't need to give him any more ammo. Scientific facts oh, from a third party. Raphael and him being kind of, you know, an oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this podcast. Sorry. We'll we'll boo um, we'll boo you at the end. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So I mean, Raph is rude. He's cool but rude. Right. But Donatello is brilliant. He's he makes stuff and he enables them to do a lot of things and he's got a bow staff and don't well, I said happen, man. That's what I said in the first episode. Everything that happens is because of Donnie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the only one who contributes nothing to the team is Michelangelo. Yeah, pretty that's much. I mean, the, <laughs> we, we've, all, we've all determined that uh, – that, uh, because the, out of the three hosts, uh, Raphael is my favorite, which is – yes. you are correct. It is the right answer. Yeah. Yeah, um, right. and then Darby likes Donatello, and, and, and Alex is the uh, the Leo fan. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. It, it's – it's hard to find a uh, a Michelangelo fan, especially I think that's if it's changing an adult. now, though, because Michelangelo in the new series is awesome. Well, that's like, true. He's not annoying like he used to be. He's just really funny. Well, the yeah. funny thing is, too, is people always say to us, like, "Hey, you guys need a fourth member. You need to get a Mikey fan." And we're all, "No, we really don't need a Mikey <laughs> fan. It's not really necessary." Um. So, uh, what about your uh, your favorite incarnation of the turtles? Um, be it a uh, comic series and uh, one of the various animated series or the movies. Uh, do you have? Maybe a, just you have because a it's so fresh in my mind. The the new series, the yeah. new comic series. Oh, the new I comic really series from uh, IDW. The IDW one. Yeah, the new one that they just put out with like the whole new origin story. The I'm the only one. Brilliant. I'm the only one reading it on this show, so they have what? to keep coming to no, me. Well, okay. I, I know. I'm he sitting there going, "You guys that. have no idea he's, what you're missing out on." It is amazing. Up. Host a podcast called Turtle Power Podcast, Ryan, <laughs> and now he's reading this book. <laughs> Ryan's reading the old ones, like the originals, and so is Alex. I'm the only one reading the IDW, and I every every podcast episode, I'm like, "You guys, it's so good." Yeah, 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 it's, it. it's incredible. I'm, I'm about some halfway really interesting through stuff with the way they retell the, the origin of the turtles and the whole, like not just mutation stuff, but like 
the the whole history of Splinter and how it comes back to haunt him and stuff like that. Exactly. It goes to a lot of places. The whole first arc where, like, Raphael begins that book as not a member of that family. Like, yeah. they don't know him. Exactly. He is completely separated from them for years. Yeah. And they and, just discover him. And they're like, oh, my God, you're one of us. And the yeah, best thing, too, and the be- one of my favorite things about the whole thing was when the Turtles first came out and were released, they all wore red bandanas, and now they're all multicolored bandanas. But this right. is the first series where they actually explain they explain why. It, right. Yeah. They, the, the history and everything with that, the kids. And... In a brilliant way. Like, oh God, and the fact that, like, Raphael comes into the family so late and he's the only one who gets the red bandana in the end is such, like, an amazing character touch. And it it just drives home like, oh, my God, they really care about this guy. It's awesome. Yeah. He doesn't want to be part of a family, but he is. It's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's just another another example of why Raphael is the best turtle, right? Just whatever. So. Whatever, man. Like, no. It's the only red bandana. That's what's up. Um, well, have, it was his favorite color. That's why he gets to wear it. It's only because he gets to wear it because it's, it's his favorite color. I'm just saying uh, Ryan, Ryan, you're not even in this. You don't read it. Uh, I, 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 I am reading it. I'm just not all the way caught up yet. Yeah. See. Okay. This is what I have to deal with. So I did have one um, question. One more question for you, but I almost okay. want to save this until the end. Um, okay. Uh, the suspense. So, there's tension on the show now. That's right. That's right. Um, oh, okay. Great. And uh, Alex will be joining us shortly. So. Um, Woo! So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, okay. So it, it all starts off with uh, the Nintendo Entertainment System, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, we, we've all – Darby, Alex, and I have had a nice long discussion about this. And uh, – oh, and we – oh, actually, let's see. I think Alex is on. Let me add him to the call. Good timing. Good, very good timing. Yeah, too bad Alex wasn't here to hear about the whole fellow Raphael love going on on this show. (laughs) I told you this was a smart guy, see? (laughs) Whatever, man. I still, it still boggles my mind that, that you got into the Turtles because of video games, but yet Raph turned out to be your favorite. (laughs) Oh, yeah, Raphael was so terrible. Like, even Michelangelo is better than Raphael. Well, yeah. Especially in the, whoa. Is Alex on? Who died? Let's see. Did we lose someone or gain someone? I think we gained. Uh, I don't know, it says Alex on my thing. Uh, Alex, hey, what's on? going on, guys? Hey, we got. Whoa! Hey. Uh, another pr- another people. Another people. <laughs> uh, so Mitch, Hi, Alex, Alex, Mitch. Alex, Mitch. Hey, Mitch. Nice to meet you. Okay. Alex missed it. You missed it. Uh, apparently, these two guys here are Raphael lovers, and I'm in. I'm in over my head over here. Uh, well, you were in over your head the minute you started liking Donatello, so that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, I hate all of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so uh, yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was about to say we, uh, Alex Darby, and I had a uh, nice long discussion on the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System version of uh, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game. Um, while and we we all we kind of came to the same agreement we came in agreement that it is a very um uh ingrained into all of us but whether or not it's a good game the no. first one the first one is absolutely not a good game no it's horrible okay so there we it's go it's like for for multiple reasons not only cuz it's like it's such a pedestrian thing where it's like you have these four characters and they all have like apparently different skills but they all suck Pretty much equally. <laughs> Except for Donatello. Sorry. Donatello is the only character in that game worth anything. But these levels are designed like old Ninja Gaiden stuff where it's specifically designed to kill you. It's like, hey, how can we just screw this player into a corner the entire time? Like, I, I have never finished that game, nor will I ever even try because it's so – it's like swimming upstream, man. It's impossible, yeah. that game. Yeah, I think I, most people were just like, if you beat the water level, the under, you know, the dam level with the bombs, you're good. You're done. You don't oh, even yeah. need to play the rest. Which is level two. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, <laughs> getting to that first sewer is kind of an accomplishment. And if you get out with, like, half of your characters, you're like a god. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've that never... Really have any of like, us I don't know how actually familiar you guys it? are with the roguelike. Do you know this genre? Say that again, sorry. Are you guys familiar with the genre uh, in gaming called road, the roguelike? Mm-mm. No. So yeah. in the in, I think 
it was in the 80s, there was this game called Rogue. And it spawned this whole subgenre in gaming culture for like the next 25 years. And Rogue was a game that you started out and it was like an RPG and you collected items and you killed enemies and you progressed and you progressed. And when you died, you started from the very beginning. There was no retry, there was no checkpoints, and you just started from the beginning with nothing. Ugh. Um, and eventually, like, that started getting to the point where in some games you could either start from the beginning um, with all of your equipment or you could continue from where you died with nothing. And there were all these different variations on the formula. And TMNT, the first one on NES, kind of fits that build, right? Where you you lose a character and he's gone forever. It's not like you're gaining anything. You're not, like, collecting items that make your characters better. But when he dies, he is dead forever. And once you run out of characters, you are done. <laughs> That's it. You just have to go back to the beginning. With nothing. And it was just, like, it was really bad design. It was a really horrible way to handle that particular game. It was interesting that you got the switch between all four, but... yeah. And they, uh, they, uh, that game and sad. as we talked about earlier, the, the, uh, the range of the character's weapon really makes a big difference. Yeah. Ra- like Raphael, as we were saying, Raphael in this game is terrible. Raphael's the yeah. sacrificial lamb. If you know you're about to go through a gauntlet of enemies, he's the one you send in to take all the damage. And then right yeah. before he dies, you switch in somebody else. Because with, and there like, was also, with... was there ever even a way to recover health? Pizza. Mm-hmm. just the pizzas. Okay, yeah. so there were pizzas around. Okay, there were, and then you, uh, in the meantime, you would have to deal with that uh, super annoying beeping sound. Yeah. Oh God, yes. Oh Jesus. W- one I thing I forgot about that. One I, thing I did now see... it's like it's just this alarm bell going off in my head. Now it's <laughs> never going to leave again. Hot out. And, it, and, and, and unfortunately, it would never. It wouldn't even go away if you switched characters. It would still be there. Yeah, it was just constant. Hey man, someone's someone's dying. Beep, 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 beep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. right, why are video games so just horribly mean to us sometimes? Yeah, it, this one and it's only six levels. It's it's uh, uh, the first <laughs> one is um, supposed to be like Fifth Avenue, Greenwich Village. Uh, second one is the Hudson River um, with the dam. Uh, third one is supposed to be Wall Street. Fourth is uh, JFK uh, Airport. Uh, the fifth one is supposed to be inside Shredder's base, which isn't supposed to be in the South Bronx. And then the sixth one is the Technodrome. Um, in the first in the first level, uh, you're, you've got Bebop as a mini boss. Uh, Rocksteady is the, the level's final boss. Um, you get to see the various incarnations of the foot soldiers, including the crouching guy that, for some reason, when he crouched, you, he didn't take any damage. Um, By their face. The uh, the chainsaw guy, yeah. Um, the frog guy, which is a guy that had a big frog head. Um, and the guy that was on fire constantly. Just <laughs> <laughs> That's the life I want to lead. <laughs> um, That's the job I want in the Foot Clan. <laughs> uh, so, Ted, welcome aboard. Um, <laughs> you know, B- Bill over there, he's already claimed the chainsaw. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Ryan's already going to crouch. And you, sorry, um, if you could just take this this container of gasoline and douse yourself, <laughs> we'll get you started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Because he just kind of just walks back and forth. Just, hey, I'm on fire. Um, the Foot Clan doesn't really have good HR. No, no, not really. Uh, they're, I heard the CEO's pretty much a big... Booyakasha! Too. So. <laughs> Booyakasha! Uh-huh. Yeah, that's all right. Uh-huh. Um, uh, there's no, there are no bosses on the second level. The just that entire, it, it's just the entire boss. map is a is a boss. <laughs> the seaweed is the boss. Um, seaweed is the boss. <laughs> um, uh, the third mission. That's when you get to drive around the turtle van. Um, oh, instead of getting smashed by it. Yeah. In that um, world. And you, you, interestingly enough, you could just, like, if there were foot soldiers just running around on the streets, you could just drive over them. So, I essentially, it's like the first version of that, you know, like, I mean, I think of that, I think of, like, Grand Theft Auto. Just right, yeah, like, running over people. Was, uh, very similar. <laughs> um, uh, in the fourth mission, you're, you, you end up trying to retrieve the turtle blimp, um, and there's a giant mouser um, as that... Uh, levels boss uh the fifth one you um are inside as i said you're inside shredder's base and the technodrome is like firing at you um 
and you essentially just make it through that. Um, no, you don't. Six one. Well, <laughs> you know. Uh, last one is inside the Technodrome, and you fight Shredder with, and he's got the anti mutagen ray, uh, the anti mutagen like ray gun that is, you end up seeing in further incarnations of the uh, of the Turtle video games. But um, and this was available on the uh, the the uh, Wii's virtual console too. Alex, you 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 have it right. Yep, sure do. Yeah. Glutton for punishment, huh? You just don't want to yeah. be happy ever again? No, I, I I don't hate the game. I really don't. I mean, I haven't beat the game. I, I, the game hates you. The yeah. game hates you. That's fine. But it's it's kind of like that one, you know, girl that kind of got away and I, I wanted to revisit it. And, you know, she just no, kind of... Uh, it's like the girl that, like, cheated on you and killed your family. No, no, no. See what it's like? It's, 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 like, it's like the girl that, that, you, that you always wondered about and you finally got another chance and then she gives you herpes. That's what it's like. <laughs> but, but you know you're gonna. But you know you're gonna get herpes before you go after it again. But that's okay. She's worth the herpes. No, she's not. No, she is absolutely not. She really isn't. I tell you, it's all about the damn level. Like you don't even need to have beaten the game. Like our guest host here today hasn't beaten the game. But if you beat the second level, that's all you need. That's all the cred. You're good. I don't know if I ever even did that. Ooh, to be it was, it's 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 tough, man. It's yeah. tough. Uh, and then you you go and you watch uh, videos online of people like doing speed runs through it, and it makes you want to kill yourself. So uh, why am why am I not that good in life? But... You watch them like switch to Raphael to go through the seaweed because he's the sacrificial lamb. Oh no, absolutely. absolutely! I'll never be as good at anything as those people are at that game that I can't stand. Yep. yep Ugh. Much. Um. All right. So. Uh, we as we as we know that the uh, the direction of uh, Turtles video gaming uh, did take a a turn to the positive with uh, the Sink and Incarnation, which uh, as as you mentioned, Mitch brought you into the the world of TMNT is the uh, arcade game, uh, which was then uh, subsequently released on the uh, Nintendo as uh, Ninja Turtles Two. Um, and is there a is there a technical term for this style game? I mean, it was the same one that we saw in the X Men game in the Simpsons game, um, right? It's a two D brawler, but you can like move around in like kind of three D. Right, right. But also, you pick your character based on the joystick that you put the quarters into. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I remember the first time I ever encountered that, and that was an issue for me. Was I tried to play some Superman game in an arcade, and I accidentally put the quarter in. Or two and tried to play with player one and i was like why isn't this working <laughs> oh i remember that game plan, man. i know exactly the one you're talking about yep um, superman and superboy yep i didn't want to be raphael why is the game not making me why is the game Let's making me play it. as rap i don't want to be yeah. rap uh, yeah um, that was like looking back that's one of the very like one of the very very few games that made like really positive transition from the arcade to the nes the nes actually handled that game very very well yeah, Whereas a lot yeah. of games that were ported from an arcade to that console took a lot of sacrifices and were much worse off. Definitely, definitely. It was um, and just some amazing uh, – actually, in both of these, I, I would say even for the first game, the uh, the music, so good. So the, the music is probably the best thing that came out of the first game. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. <laughs> I disagree, um, but that that's all right. The music in TMNT 2 doesn't really stand out in my memory as much as it does in Turtles in Time, but we'll get there. Ah, uh, yes. Good point. Um, and, and interestingly enough, the uh, this this style of gameplay um, does, um, I guess, does appear in both this, the arcade game, uh, Turtles 3, uh, the, the Manhattan Project, um, and uh, Turtles in Time. It, it's it's all the same game mechanic. It's it's that that kind of two two D semi three D uh, button mashing up and down. Yeah, um, it's uh they're, they're just they're just fun games. I mean, there's there's not it's it they're not super technical. It's just a button masher, but there is some skill involved. Uh, um, you know, if you want to try to you know. Avoid getting hit. There's a lot of jumping involved. You got to keep, you know, do a lot of jump kicks. 
<laughs> that's, um, the, that's the key to that game is just drop kick everybody. Yeah. They, yeah. they teach you that immediately too in the first, yeah. in TMNT two. Like that first level stands out in my brain so starkly. Probably because I've played it a thousand times. But you're in that apartment building and it's on fire and you're looking for April and there's all these different foot coming at you. Like dudes who can they have size and they have swords and they they jump around a whole lot and they keep you on your toes. Plus you have like the bowling balls rolling down yes. the stairs for whatever reason. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why do are the giant cannonballs like in every Ninja Turtles game. That's just how Shredder rolls, man. The staple, man. <laughs> and like, who's lifting these up the, up the stairs and just sitting? I can just imagine like a foot soldier. Well, of course. Probably Rocksteady, man. He's the boss at the end of that level. <laughs> yeah, well, somebody's got to stand up there and wait. for. They're just sitting down there looking down the hall, looking down the stairwell, just like, okay, <laughs> he's going to come by any second now. This will get him, I swear. <laughs> and then, oh, there he is. Let it go. <laughs> um but uh yeah no that's another thing again it, it, you you see again over and over and over um but uh this this the the arcade game um I know Darby and I we played it growing up in the uh, in the arcades uh the arcade on, on back home and um I always did better cuz I was Donnie uh, jeez um we uh it was also available um on xbox live and alex you downloaded it on xbox live it's i did um it's it's pretty pretty accurate to the original it's fairly accurate it's been a long time since i actually played the uh the the true arcade version so um but based on what i remember in your in your uh in your garage or anything no no, 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 no. In, in in the ghetto that I lived in in Chicago, unfortunately, we didn't have an arcade. Uh, we had a lot of drive-bys, but it was strange arcade. to see the. It was the NES version that ended up on modern arcade instead of the actual proper arcade version. That was really peculiar. Right. Yep. And then uh, yeah, Konami held the rights to both, as far as I know. Yeah, and it, and we get, we'll actually get into some of the issues with uh, with all of the the licensing that's kind of going on now. Uh, at the end here because uh, you go and try to buy uh, or download a, a Turtles game right now. You're not going to be able to. Um, nope. Uh, but uh, in addition, um, if if you do want to go out and, and, and play this game right now, go to, you know, uh, I guess GameStop would probably be the best, easiest way. Get yourself a copy of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Battle Nexus. Uh, for um, 360 um, PlayStation 2 uh, because it is um, or actually even on Game GameCube uh, as well. Yeah, GameCube. Yeah, that uh, it is um, an unlockable on the on those uh, on that game. So the issue is that you have to play through Battle Nexus, which was garbage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of sad when a game's like selling feature is. We have another game on here. Yeah, it was a big selling feature too. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um, so uh, that that kind of leads us straight into uh, Turtles Three: The Manhattan Project, uh, um, almost a clone of of the second game. Um, that yeah, uh, I, have, I have literally no recollection of this game. Like I just I don't know if I've even ever played it because it's just they, they, there are no memories of this game in my mind. But I'm sure if I looked at it, I'd probably confuse it for the one that came before it. Yeah, it, it's it's very similar. It starts off the, the there was the a main... lot of Pizza Hut product placement in it. It was. Yeah. Oh, it was that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. It here, That's all you got to say. I probably played it in a Pizza Hut. <laughs> probably. Uh, there was. Um, uh, we have a, fr- a friend of mine, listener of the show, John. He actually uh, gave me his uh, copy, and I played it in about um, maybe like three weeks ago. Uh, it's just kind of research and it is, I mean, it's, it's a straight up, you know, they just changed the levels around and it's, it's, it's almost identical. They, they may have added in like a throwing feature where you could throw a foot, you know, like at other foot, um, uh, other foot soldiers coming by, but that's really about it. The, Did the you play as all the turtles with, in that game or no? What's that? Did you play as all the turtles in the game or no? Uh, yeah. 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 It's. I mean, well, it's another one they, where they added, you, they added special attacks in that game. Now, is, okay, so I couldn't remember if that was the one that they added special attacks in. Um, it was. It was okay. 
No, no, no. They had it in two as well. Like we hit jump and attack at the same time. You did like a three sixty attack that hurt you. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's, yes. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah, that, so no, that's that in is. TMNT two as well. Okay. So where you would lose a life, you would lose life by doing the special move, and that was in the X Men game as well. Yeah. So mm. that's in um, every X Men game. <laughs> uh, this one, um, the the thing that stuck in my mind was that at the beginning of the game. The turtles are in Florida, which we, the <laughs> three of sense. us all live. They in. must be on vacation visiting yeah, their they're grandmothers. Yeah, on vacation in Florida. I believe at, in the Keys, and uh, and they they go and watch April on the news. In Florida, <laughs> in Florida, <laughs> Florida is really in New York, in New York City. City's news. <laughs> <laughs> the local news, and then they uh, they surf all the way back to. New York. That's Florida. incredible. <laughs> wow. That must have taken forever. I know. Don't, the waves don't, I mean, they go north and south in the Atlantic, apparently. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. They don't go They north had to have rode a, a hurricane or something that was going up the coast or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> that is amazing. Um, you do see uh, Toka and Razar uh, in this, in this game. Um, as well as Super Shredder, uh, all three coming from uh, uh, Secret of the Use. Um, that was their first um, appearance in, in video games. Um, the rest of the uh, the characters were kind of your standard, you know, uh, Leatherhead and Slash and Shredder and Krang. And, and then a Triceraton that never made an appearance but was on the cover art. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so this was a, this is a good question for you, Mitch. Um, did you have a, uh, uh, an old school Game Boy? Oh, man, I miss my old school Game Boy so much. <laughs> the gray, I gray. I was, man, I remember I found some some game out there. I can't remember what it was, what it was called, but it was this awful side scrolling Game Boy game, a Turtles side scrolling game, and it was also impossible. I couldn't get through it, but it was also just really difficult to, to navigate because everything looked the exact same. Right. Because the Game Boy only had like thirteen shades of gray that it could put, it could visualize. Right, right. So there were three um, three games for the Game Boy: uh, Fall of the Foot Clan, Back from the Sewers, and Radical Rescue. That was yeah. it. Yeah, that was it. The rest, Radical Fall Rescue. Of the Foot Clan. So, um, yeah. What a terrible waste of money that was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we neither of us had any uh, real experience with these games, so we didn't have much to talk about it. But uh, it doesn't sound like uh, anything too positive coming out of. No, it's not like you missed out. Okay, <laughs> well, it's good to know. Um, but uh, this all, this all led to what uh, the three of us all agreed on, and like to get your your opinion on it is what we believe to be the best um, Turtles video game of all, which was Turtles in Time. Um, it was released in arcades in 91, um, to Super Nintendo in 92. Um, and, uh, I, I actually was, have, thought we could have a little game here. Um, see if we can try to remember every level and every boss of this game. Alley Cat Blues! Big Apple, 3 a.m. <laughs> okay, so there's one. Big, Big Apple, Very my shell at Wounded. And me. who's, who's the boss? Baxter Stockman. Oh, and the first good. one. Yeah, Baxter was first at the end of the city. And then the second one was Alley Cat Blues. Shooting lasers at you. Alley Cat Blues with Metalhead was number two. Yep. Um, oh, I want to say... Awesome. I want to say the pirate ship... No, the pirate ship wasn't. That was after they went back in time. Um, yeah. Who's next? Was it Token Razor? In the, no. Oh, no. Yeah. That's the one. I think it was Shredder in the third level, because then he, like, you, you have to throw the foot at the camera to like smash right. his robot. No, that was after Token Razar. Yeah. The, the, so, okay. okay, so we're, we're skipping one, which was the sewers, which is where all the... Oh, the Rat were. King. S- sewer surfing. Sewer surfing with the Rat King. Yeah. Yeah. Pizza Monsters King. and the Rat King. So oh, no, something to, to, to note is that the arcade version um, at the end of this level is where you got sent back in time. Yes. yes. There was no boss. Uh, for the Super Nintendo version... Which we was we, so much better. We yeah, we all agree this is the better of the two. Yeah, that was a very uh, has Rat King and on a was missile like, firing okay. boat. But there was way more in the Super Nintendo version. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, there was like three extra levels. Yeah, 
so the um, not just, just that, but I mean, also there were three extra levels. But I've never seen a boss fight like that Shredder in the Spider Machine ever. That I, blew my mind. Has anybody ever? And it's still kind of thought. Did that like happen before ever in video games where? Like, the, the whole boss fight was from the, the boss's point of view, and you had to, especially on a 2D scroller, you had to throw people at him to hurt him? Yeah, that was really clever, because they, they made, like, a perfect transition between, like, you walk into that, that room, and it's it, the, the perspective stays the exact same, but you just see his, like, radar and, and his, you see his him control system and the UI of the robot. Yep. Oh, yeah, he's, like, at the bottom, right? Like, shuffling. You're, around. like, looking over his shoulder while you're playing. Yep, yep. Oh my god, that was brilliant. <laughs> so this is inside the Technodrome. You do fight Toka and Razar. Uh, they're the mini bosses. And if after you beat uh Razar, you could continue to hit him after he turned into a, a wolf and, and he would cry. He would like and bark he would at cry. you. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe random. Maybe like the baby wolf were super adorable. Right, right. Yeah, that did not look like a wolf. That looked like a... Looked like a puppy. Yeah. <laughs> like a little spaniel or something. Uh, and then, right, then you go on to, to face Shredder. You defeat the mechanical spider, which doesn't really matter because then he sends you back in time. Yeah. Where Slash is the where Slash is the boss. Well, now Slash is the boss in the Super Nintendo game. The That's Arc- the one we're Batman was the other one. Yeah, which he or was a essentially- lava man. Well, I don't know what his actual name is, but he looks like he's very similar to like Clayface from the Batman. Right, series. where he's just like in the mud and taking shapes. Right. And I, underground. I hated that. You can't even dodge his attack, where he just goes into the ground and runs straight at you. You can't dodge it. Yeah. Now, if you jump in the air, he waits for you to land, and then he hits you anyway. Now, now <laughs> I will say that the um, the reshelled version of this game. Uh, he is much more difficult than he was in the original. So I mean, whether <laughs> whether because whether, uh, because the uh, the original. So I can mention this now. Um, the uh, the arcade version. While yes, we we did mention that Ubisoft did do a remake. It was called uh, Turtles in Time Reshelled. Uh, that was available on Xbox Live and PlayStation Network. Uh, but it was also a more I guess closer to the original version, the arcade version was released um, on uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Three: Mutant Nightmare, um, which kind of same idea as as uh, the Battle Nexus game. You can find if you want to if you want to play that. It's the same idea. You got to unlock it and everything like that. But um, yeah, he's a lot easier in in those in that older versions. But yeah, he's he is tough. Uh, there's one trophy uh, in the um, in the uh, reshelled version that I don't have, and it's it's going through the the whole game um, without losing a life. Um, and uh, that guy's the reason why. That guy's the reason why. Yeah, because you uh, you can't dodge his attack. It's yeah. just impossible. It, 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 yeah, pretty much. Because um, he Reshell's moves faster a lot than you can. So you still get a lot of hate. You for jump a lot of out of the way, but it yeah. does. You can't even like die and then change turtles. If you die, it's it. Right, you're right. Yep. I'm like, oh, I don't care if I die in this level. I'll just change turtles, and then it was like game over. I'm like, what? Yep. My issues with the updated version: one, they took out the best boss fight in the entire game. See, okay, wait, time out. See, what you're doing then is you're saying that the arcade version, because this Ubisoft version is an update of the arcade version. So that boss battle that you're saying is not there was not there in the arcade version. The reason Which that they can't make me like it less. Well, yeah, but <laughs> this, that that's the older version. Cause the arcade game came out in 91. The super Nintendo game came out in 92. Now when Ubisoft goes to remake it, they can't make the super Nintendo version because Nintendo owns the license, but they can make the original arcade version. Got it? Uh, Got it. I love the way that game looked, though. I mean, they took away a lot of the finer details of the Super Nintendo. Like, the some of the cityscapes look a lot more just dull and flat. But I love, like, the 3D art and the way the turtles looked and the way they kind of glowed. Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, Absolutely. yeah, and, uh, especially, like, in the first level, Big Apple 3 a.m., when Krang actually oh, Krang grabs onto amazing. the bridge and starts shooting at you. Like, yeah. that yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah. He wasn't just moving up and down in, like, a 
pre-programmed motion. He actually like shows up, yells at you, grabs onto the bridge, and then just I thought that was cool. Yeah, the the dexterity of his fingers as he's grabbing on to the exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um. So uh, after prehistoric turtle saurus, you get anybody remember the next one? Is it the uh, pirate level or no? Yes. Yeah, skull and crossbones. Yeah. Skull and crossbones. Yeah. Um, or we'll Bebop and Rocksteady are the bosses. Yep. And all you had to do was beat one of them. And, um, yeah, yeah. Because um, then they kill each that, other if you beat one of them. After that, you've got... My favorite level. Of course it is. Bury my shell at Wounded Knee. Because <laughs> Leatherhead, your favorite Leatherhead. character, yeah, is man. the boss. Um, and then... Uh, after that point, we we're no longer in the past. Now we start to go into the future, which yeah, um, <laughs> Neon Night Riders is that supposed to be set in twenty twenty. That level. So we've got seven years till we've got you know floating uh, <laughs> floating cars and and neon well we have we have two years so we have hoverboards and, and hoverboards and <laughs> that's that's true. True. I like that. <laughs> and the Cubs win the the World Series. So yeah, they beat Florida to do it. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, you do fight Krang uh, with his android body at the end of this uh, level, um, and then from there we go to the next level, Starbase, where no turtle has gone before. Set in twenty uh, or excuse me, twenty one hundred A.D., which is actually on Mars. How is Krang still alive at this point? How is Shredder? Uh, Shredder, they go back. But how is you Krang know. still alive that far into the future? He must live, brains live a really long time. I guess so. That's true. That's I don't true. Know, I don't know that we know what the lifespan based, of a based of a on the neutrons, is, so. though. We we know that they they do live a long time. So. The neutrons, yes. Yeah. Um, so in this level, you fight Krang, but he's in a floating saucer. So <laughs> God, he was so annoying, and he's dropping Mausers on you yeah. the whole time. It's the bubbles that upset me, man. Uh, Freaking yeah. bubbles! I was. Uh. <laughs> Right? Like, you all have pointy weapons. How are you getting stuck in bubbles? Donnie doesn't have a pointy <laughs> weapon. <laughs> See, that's what Donatello sucks. Oh, I'll tell you what, we'll play video games. You can be raffing every single one. We'll see who lasts longer. And I'll be like, wait up, guys. Let me get some points. <laughs> yeah. Donnie, stop <laughs> killing everybody right? with Donatello. Sorry. Okay, so now that actually brings up a point, is that when you're playing these games... Uh, you are you are fighting for not only to get through the level, but you're fighting for points because the more points you get, you could extra get lives, ex- extra lives, and you're also fighting to see who gets the pizza because there's pizza if you got two players. There's only one pizza. Now it would it would seem to to be as far as a teamwork that the guy with the lowest life amount of life would get the pizza. No, but it's always a race, and so he doesn't need it. Grabs it, goes, oh, no, wait, sorry. <laughs> you get only, the next one. You'll get the next one. The only one I was ever to get allowed when Ryan and I would play was the spinning one because I was always Donatello. And, of course, you're going to want Donatello to get the spinning pizza. It's true. You smash those explosive barrels. And, yep. Oh, yeah. Now, oh, the other thing, too, is that I find it with the spinny things is that um, whenever you first saw them, don't get them there. You wait. Yeah. You kill all the guys right around there. And then now you're ready to move on. Then you get the spinning thing, and then you just haul ass down for the next, you know, however many seconds, and you just take out everybody in your way. So, so pro tip for you guys: basic strategy. (laughs) Turtles in Time is one of my favorite animations of all time. It's when you step on the plank in the pirate ship, and it just smashes them in the face. You guys remember that? (laughs) That gets so reshelled. That is so. Friggin' annoying. It, it, yeah. is, it seemed like it was more... Uh, more um, Prevalent. Yeah. You, it, was, it didn't matter where you went. You were. You yeah, were they were harder them. to see because, I mean, in the Super Nintendo version, I think they were, like, slightly discolored, plus you could see the nail in the board. Yeah. It was, like, where band-aids is, or, or something. Or, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think it was, like, a nail in the board in, in reshelled, and it was, like, kind of hard to see because the game was, like, the, the, the modeling of the ship wasn't very good. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. But um, uh, after you defeat uh, Krang in the Starbase and you go back to the Technodrome uh, and you get to fight Super Shredder uh, f- to try to save the Statue of Liberty. But, uh, by the way, that's the, kind of the whole purpose of this. <laughs> Krang steals, steals the, very beginning of Super, April's newscast. The, the Statue of Liberty right at the beginning. Yep. yep. So 
Let me tell you how much I loved his, uh, you know, what you said it earlier, Ryan, the, the anti-mutagen attack that Super Shredder had. Yeah, yeah. The uh, that Oh, and he uses that prevalently uh, as Super Shredder in the end here, where uh, when, when you get... When you get hit with that and then you shrink into a little baby, like, naked turtle and then you, like, start screaming. Yep. <laughs> but wouldn't the that take away, like, like, Turtles in Time stands out so much to me. Like, that and the end of uh, TMNT 2, because both have these, like, amazingly memorable, memorable things, both with the little baby turtles. But also Shredder is cloning himself in 2, and he's Super Shredder in Turtles in Time. And you're fighting in front of the Statue of Liberty. Oh, yeah. my God. Those yeah. final bosses are fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Too bad they didn't put more effort in the rest of the game. <laughs> and unfortunately this was kind of the end of an era with this one um i don't know if if uh they just thought that they couldn't do any better than this or if they um you know stopped caring yeah I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not quite sure but the, uh unfortunately that was the last um of that series of games of that that um that kind of you know 2d uh semi 3d um game uh it's it's kind of sad you don't see these uh you don't you don't see that too much anymore i mean i think we hit a period in the 90s and it lasted about 10 years where the turtles just kind of didn't matter nobody wanted anything to do with them there were there weren't really that many comics to my knowledge yeah so they stopped making games konami may have lost the publishing rights um, there wasn't a TV show anymore, so there was just this like weird void yep. in Turtles history where they did not exist until yep. like the 2004 TV series. Yeah, you so you were uh, you were referencing the Dark Ages. <laughs> yes, it was, uh, it was a tough Leap time for times, all of us. Man. It was a tough time, um, but but as they sent us out, they sent us out with a um, well, it, it wasn't a uh, it wasn't a gem, but uh, it was something. Uh, that was the uh, tournament fighters game. Woo! Oh my god, I forgot about that game. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> that game was so great. I have no idea why you're upsetting that game right now. Oh, uh, it it's something. It's uh, <laughs> uh, man, I was actually playing it uh, earlier, uh, earlier today. Um, yeah, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, you know, uh, clone clone that uh that we the clone um formula that we've we've seen is very prevalent in turtle video game history but uh it uh it, it was something um you can see the origin of this in turtles in time actually because there is a versus mode in turtles in time where you would like go into the turtles lair and just have a one-on-one fight while casey and april and splinter watch two turtles beat the snot out of each other wow. oh yeah i owned ryan in those because i was always oh, donatello <laughs> <laughs> Man. there was no way to block in that though so it is impossible to beat donatello that's true um that's true on, that's man, very good. i actually totally forgot about sides. that i, I yeah. must have just you know must have just buried that deep deep inside of me and, and <laughs> Hope that uh, never came back. Always happy to bring it out, bud. Thanks, man. Um, interesting thing is that uh, uh, one of the mu- one of the stages, uh, the art museum stage, uh, I noticed today was that uh, there's some of the neutrinos sitting in the background. Yep. Um, you know, similar to the Street Fighter games when you'd have just you know people kind of cheering on just, the fight, just doing yeah, cheering on fire, just kind of randomly just moving back and forth like. <laughs> Um, but, uh, and another interesting thing is that this was released on the Super Nintendo and Genesis in 93, uh, and then released on the Nintendo Entertainment System in 94. So Hmm. actually came out on the newer consoles first, and then a year later came out on the older console, which... I had no idea it ever even came to the older consoles. Yeah. There did I. Yeah, it's, uh, odd, odd situation, um, there. Which, uh, I mean, you don't see that nowadays really at all, so. What I thought was weird about that game, though, was a lot of the characters that, like, you never heard of before, like, like Asuka, my character spotlight from last week, where they just created characters for it, you know? Yeah, yeah that's, that was her only appearance in, in Turtle history, but she had the, the, the best, best, spe- like, move ever. <laughs> yeah, the, the flying butt attack that every the female fighter has in every game ever. Um, but then there were like War and the the Wombat, like mm-hmm. like they were from the comics. Like uh, people who got into it because of the show, I have no idea who they are. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot lot of uh, characters from the Archie comic series in this in this game. 
But um, so. like they didn't even have Bebop and Rocksteady in there. You think, yeah, oh, true. Turtle Fighting Game, Bebop that's and Rocksteady. True. That's true. No. Um, I figure oh, the pro- part of that was probably because they wanted all of the characters to be the exact same size. Mm. And Bebop and Rocksteady obviously would have caused huge, huge issues with that. Um, what are you talking no, about? The turtles, Four is not that, enormous. Not, not that Turtles or uh, Tournament Fighters is terribly a balanced fighting game, <laughs> but like those dudes would have just completely broken everything. They would have taken up too much real estate. They probably would have been super overpowered. Um, they probably would have had huge reach. Plus, they also would have been really easy to hit because they were so large. Well, so you, they they you, probably had to scale everybody down to approximately the same size. Well, you think too about that those two characters and what is kind of their their attack is just Ray punch. guns and and charge guns and running right, which is not really set up for a fighting game. So, well, come on, the shark's attack is he swims through the air at you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, come on. It's got me there. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was it was something. Um, it, it, pretty difficult, too. It was just, uh, it wasn't a very uh, gamer-friendly um, game. Uh, uh, Mitch, what about, um, did you, did, you, uh, did you play Sega Genesis back in the day? No, I was a Super Nintendo kid. Yeah, me too. Um <laughs> There, there was one game on the that was exclusive to the Genesis, which was Hyperstone Heist. Um, it was a totally new plot, but uh, they had some of the animations and some of the backgrounds and stuff like that from Turtles in Time that were reused for this game. But yeah, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have much knowledge about this game either. So, I mean, it was just your basic side scroller, just like the other ones. Uh, I don't remember too much about the game. One thing that did stick out to me was the fact that. Rocksteady's in the game, but Bebop is not. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I thought that was really, really weird. I mean, you, it's like you can't have one without the other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would, definitely. I don't think so. So, but um, I mean, it's 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 kind of the same thing, you know. April is reporting from Ellis Island, and you know that's it's. It, you probably remember the beginning of it where um, the you know the audience is. You know, and they they witness Manhattan Island. Um, you know, it starts it starts to shrink, and then Shredder hijacks it, and it, it gets. You know, they basically uh, he has like this wonderful, you know, hyperstone, and he demonstrates the power of the hyperstone. And, you know, the takes it to Dimension X, and it's it's a pretty pretty solid game. It just uh, it you know, I mean, the Genesis was not the main the big console at the time. It was the Super Nintendo, so a lot of people missed out on this game. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so then you get into the the aforementioned Dark Age. Uh, it, was, it was tough for all of us. Um, we we you know started getting into some some crazy stuff. You know, like some Power I did, I did some did some Power Ranger for a little while. X Men. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, thankfully, with the uh, the two thousand three. Um, uh, series that that came about um uh it it fortunately brought about some well fortunately or unfortunately depending on your your opinion brought about some some new video games for us all and uh the the first of uh the first i guess set you could call them are are, are based on the the directly off of the uh the 2003 series um uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Turtles Two: Battle Nexus, and Turtles Three: Mutant Nightmare, um, uh, all very similar. Um, it's a it's a new a new gaming mechanic, but they all share it. It's a you know it's an action adventure game um, with a, a camera that was would just kind of hover in the air, not not directly over, um, but uh, kind of like at like a forty five degree angle and. Um, they were fun, but uh, and, and technically sound, but they're they're pretty much just button mashers. You, know? it was, you didn't have to think too much <laughs> to play these. Um, the the first game based on the first season, second game based on the second season, third game based on the anybody want to guess third uh, season, sixth third season, sixth. It was the sixth. <laughs> Where they go forward uh, in time. Um, uh, 
you know, it, and I actually uh, even looked up the IGN scores. Um, five three, uh, six zero, oh, and a five five. Uh, well, those sound about right. Yeah, yeah, they <laughs> they sound about right. It's that's, that is true. Um, I remember really enjoying it at the time, though, because I was so like a friend and I had split the cost of the first game in middle or high school whenever it came out. Um, probably high school, yeah. And we had both just gotten jobs, and we split the cost of the first game. We played a co op. And it was really short. We got exactly what we needed out of it, and we never played it again. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. The, the, it, that first one, there was not a lot of replayability in that one. There was no; it really lacked extra features too. Like, right? It that was what was, and I, I, I guess they realized that, and that's why they started including some of the extra stuff, like the battle nexus in the second game, and the and the inclusion of the, uh, the aforementioned arcade game uh, as well. Um, which, which you know, definitely bumped up the uh, the um, the appeal of the game. Uh, and then in the third one, um, one thing, and I was actually just playing this game um, about a week ago uh, and doing research for the show. That uh, there's some really strange um, animated animation transitions uh, between cutscenes, in that they'll have animation that's from the show. And in the cutscene, but then they'll like sw- the the, the cutscene will change, and it'll be this this strange CG animation that was made just for the game that looked absolutely nothing like the rest of the animation, and it no would just switch that. back and forth. Yeah, it's very very odd. Um, and uh, you know, same idea. It's it's you know just button mashing and and just you know you can try to find the. Uh, they had some unlockable stuff. You could uh, you could um, unlock uh, uh, stuff of like, like a uh, action figure um, uh, stuff from Playmates. Like you could see like kind of like a concept art for for action photos. Figures. Of- yeah, yeah, yeah. God, art unlocks are such a joke. <laughs> yeah, it, it's um, you know it, they, they you could tell they were trying to find something to make you know the players want to come back and, and do you know they're really reaching right. for stuff so um, and then the, the and a very odd addition to this this series was uh, mutant melee which. Uh, uh, we don't talk about melee. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> there is no storyline. It's it's the exact same game mechanic as the the three previous games. It's just random fighting locations and enemies. Very odd, very odd game. Uh, it, it literally was. It looks like, uh, you know. Somebody, uh, you know, high up said, "Hey, where's that next Turtles game?" And they said, uh, "Oh, you know, Boogie Kasha." Uh, <laughs> forgot about that. <laughs> and uh, so they they just put something together real quick, had you know nothing prepared, and just put it out there. Well, it's, it's it's a feeble attempt at a party game, from what I remember. It's yeah. There's there's no there's no story. It's it's literally just. Um, you know, have uh, they? They tried to do like you know, see who could survive the longest, or see who could you know. Uh, right. They had a, they had a bunch of different game modes, like you know, um, Last Man Standing and stuff like that. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it was just it it was, the, it was such a it was such a poor excuse of a, of a turtles video game, and we're comparing it to previous t- turtle video games, which <laughs> doesn't have a, a great history, but. But um, yeah, um, you guys, got anything else on this one? Nope. I, I try to avoid its existence. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, and uh, and that was the unceremonial ending to kind of this this uh, this um, collection of, of video games. You know, we we had that first that first set of that that, that kind of arcade. Um, uh, 2D, 3D, um, and then we transition to this version, which is kind of a um, an adventure style with the the same camera mechanics. They all four of these shared, uh, and then the next uh, the next turtle video game was uh, TMNT, um, 
based on the the movie. Um, got a six zero on IGN. So, uh, which is probably pretty accurate, but yeah. I really love that game. Yeah, it, um, it, it now it, interesting. It was released in two thousand seven. It was released on three hundred and sixty, but not on PlayStation three. Yeah, that was a weird time because it was it was a year after the PlayStation three had launched, maybe mm-hmm. a little less than a year. Yep. And there were early on in that time, developers were still trying to figure out how to use the the infrastructure, the the architecture of that console, to make their games work. Mm. So there were a lot of games at the time that were exclusive to the 360 because developers just couldn't handle the, re- or they didn't have the resources to make another version of it for a, for a console that had totally unfamiliar architecture. <laughs> so what we ended up getting stuff like that. Um, and there were, there were a lot of games that came out like two or three years later on the PlayStation than they did on the 360, just because it took that much extra time to figure out how to develop for that platform. Interesting. So, but I really loved that game because it was it was almost like a Prince of Persia game with turtles. It was weird because it was a single player only experience. There were no uh, co op or multiplayer options whatsoever. Right, and it followed the the movie storyline pretty strictly, where you just you played as Leonardo in the jungle, you played as Raphael in the city. But it did a lot of cool stuff where all these different characters had all these different skills that made for some really interesting and fun <laughs> mechanics. Yeah. I don't know if you guys played it, but it was kind of awesome to be like hovering over the the city during the parade as Michelangelo using your helicopter skill, which was as useful for platforming and getting around as it was uh, for right. combat. Right. It um, now at the time I didn't have a 360. I do now. So, based, I mean, it, based on your uh, what you're saying right now, I'm, I'm going to have to go and see if I can find this and, and try it out. Um, I have that, this. Conspiracy theory that that game was built probably by the same team that eventually made the 2008 Prince of Persia game. Hmm. And I feel like a lot of the stuff in that game was an experiment to see if Prince of Persia could work. Oh, um, interesting. Using these different mechanics because there are so many similarities between them, not the least of which is like the platforming feels exactly the same, where you right. would jump onto a, a ledge with the turtles and just you would shimmy along it in a really quick way. Um, you would climb all over stuff, swing on things like Prince of Persia. And it all kind of fed into what all of Ubisoft's games would eventually become, which is every game is about somebody climbing and jumping over stuff. Over and, and over just, and over again. Yeah, and Turtles was kind of the, the test bed for that, I feel. Interesting. Hmm. And yeah. it worked really well. That game is super fun. Also, it's like a free thousand achievement points. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. It, uh, uh, this, it had a kind of a different camera mechanic. It was lower. Uh, it was kind of closer to like a third-person view. Uh, but yeah. not always directly behind the character. Um, it did dynamic stuff, too, where, like, it would swing out and do a side view to show you, like, this is where you need to jump, and it would change as you progress through a level. They did interesting stuff. Like, I had Vertigo for the first time playing a video game, playing TMNT. Um, oh. I'd, like that Michelangelo parade scene I mentioned. You jump onto a balloon, and you can see down, and it's like, Jesus, I'm, like, 30 stories above the city. This is crazy. Wow. Mm-hmm. So they do some fun stuff with the camera work. Um, I feel like that game was pr- a pretty mediocre brawler, but at the time it had a lot of cool stuff going for it, and I'm kind of sad that people didn't play it. Yeah. Like, like I said, for me, at the time, um, all I had was a PS3. Um, right. Didn't have a 360. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely have to go back and, and try this out. Um, and then last but not least, well... The, I guess we'll see. Um, <laughs> was uh, another clone, another uh, Turtles clone um, smash up, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles smash up. It was released in 2009. Once again, not on PlayStation 3, but also not this on. This was a Wii only game, I think. It was Wii. I don't know if this even Wii and PS2. It hit the PS2. Yeah. In yeah, 2009, that's... was only on PS2 and, and Wii. Um, which now, see. This, I think, was more of a marketing uh, decision of a of a of a gaming, um, uh, you know, based on who they think would be playing this game and what ages might right. have that console available. I, I think at the time that was probably around the time Smash Brothers Brawl came out, yeah. and like Nintendo Smash Brothers is like a huge two D fighting game using all of your favorite characters, and you just beat the snot out of each other. And this was a very very 
unsubtle carbon copy of that game, but it wasn't <laughs> nearly as good. Yeah. Yeah. It did get an, a 7.0 on IGN. Wow. Yeah. Who, who is responsible for this? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Alex, you, you played this game, right? What's up? You played this game, right? Oh, yeah. I had this game. Uh, um, yeah, I, I sold it soon after uh, buying it. Yep. it. Yeah, it was it was it wasn't good at all. Um, you know, the, it, it was it was typical Nintendo. There was like a bunch of their own characters. like they had uh, rabbits as a character selection, which I never like. They actually have a raving rabbit, and they had a ninja rabbit, and th- that was their uh, their solution to character selection to kind of. Uh, it's too bad they didn't just have like a Ubisoft catch-all. Like here's Sam Fisher fighting Donatello. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You know that that may have been better. So, um, uh, Darby, you've got a Wii. Did you ever play this? No, I did not. No. <laughs> couldn't couldn't even bring you over, huh? No, no. Mm-hmm. Well, that's okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so, unfortunately, this is the last uh, Turtles game that we've got, guys. Um, you know, it's been over three years now um, with no Turtle games. And part of that has been due to the uh, the transition of ownership of the, the Turtles. Uh, but uh, with the success of the new, uh, the new show and the, uh, um, the forthcoming movie. Uh, speaking of which, uh, what are your thoughts on the, uh, the movie? <laughs> is this still the Michael Bay thing? I've only been like yeah, loosely paying attention to it. It's still the Michael Bay thing. It's. I mean, it's I wasn't as offended company. by the whole thing, like its existence, as everyone else is. Cause yeah. Michael Dire- Michael Bay is a kind of a terrible director, sure, but <laughs> I mean, I'm always. He's also done great films, so I'm not. I, I expect him to do poorly, but I'm also open minded about it. Right. Also, the whole thing with like they're from space is, you know, whatever. Do whatever you want. If it's a good movie, it's a good movie. If it's bad, then that's probably. If that's part of it, sure. Yeah, we, we, that's basically uh, a really long way of saying I shrugged. Right, and and, and that's kind of what we did. Um, I mean, we're yeah, we we did two episodes of we we actually read over the entire script, and uh, right, and um, of an older script. Now they have since redone it, and and we're waiting to to you know. Or so they say. Yeah, well, (laughs) we're waiting to see and hear what what they end up doing with it all. But, um, you know, we're definitely in the the idea of of just wait and see what we get. Make a determination there. There was some positives with the script that we read. There was some. No, there wasn't. Oh, come on. (laughs) There there was some good things. I thought there was. I thought there was some positive things. But um, the whole idea... uh, really quickly is that essentially the the script that we read was essentially they turned the turtles into the transformers movie where the focus was on oh good casey and april versus and they and, just happened to run into the turtles and exist in their world yeah it, as or get the, caught up in their scheme the I'm, turtles i don't hate that it's, it's an interesting new way to approach a story and probably an origin story that we've seen a thousand times before. Yeah. Especially for fans like us, right? Like we know this story and we know these characters so well that doing something new with it is the only way to keep us on our toes, to keep us interested. The only part of it I actually liked was when they were trapped in an elevator getting bullets blasted at him and Leo takes an unconscious Mikey and uses him as a shield against the bullets. That's awesome. <laughs> that was the only part of the entire script. I laughed so hard at that moment. That's incredible. And that was about it. And Mikey wakes up for like a, a few seconds. He's like, oh, what's going on? And he was like, no, you better go back to sleep for this, buddy. He's like, okay. <laughs> so, you know, see, there are some good things. No, that go. was that was it. That, <laughs> yeah, I have to agree with Darby on that. That's, that's when, come on. Yeah, Leo, Leo picks mind. up an entire forklift, throws it in the air while Raph jumps in the air, goes into his shell to knock the forklift into other people. I no. <laughs> okay, that's dumb. um it it, like it gave them you know essentially like superpowers that were you know they're also six five six six they're like monstrous they're they're, yeah they're a foot and a half taller than they used to be and and i and i had this weird feeling that if they go through with everything and and back me up on this um i have a feeling raf will sound like the wise cracking black transformers if he um oh, oh, cuz <laughs> raf uh, raf is the wise crack of the group i have a feeling he's going to sound like those two small black transformers from the movies oh, goodness he's goodness. always the guy that they make into like the super stereotypical new yorker though 
Yeah, but I like just he always have this... has that I would do it, forget it, but get over it. It just sounds so silly. <laughs> like none of them have the same accent ever. That's true. That's true. Very true. But I just had this feeling that because he's the wisecracker, they're going to make him like the black stereotype like they did in Transformers. They may. I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. It's, uh... I mean, they're all really tall and athletic. Why not? Oh, goodness gracious. Maybe Shaq will do his voice. That'd be something. No, Shaq would be like, I don't know who he'd probably the turtle that they find out that they're related to who's eight feet tall yeah. at the end. <laughs> wait, is that a real thing? That's yes. A real thing. Yeah. That's a real thing. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so uh, kind of bring it up, finish, finish this off with the, uh, the, with uh, the turtles video games. Uh, where, um, I mean, you got to imagine there's something in the works that that Nickelodeon has put it out there for some um, some uh, publisher to to work on a a Turtles video game based on the new series. Um, Especially because right. there's already Flash games on their website. Right. So here here are my thoughts on that. Okay. Nickelodeon traditionally uses THQ as a video game publisher, well, and not so much THQ anymore. is in like some really deep trouble right now. They're selling <laughs> yeah. off all of their assets. They filed for Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. Um, the company is like they're they are worth nothing anymore. So they're desperately trying to get rid of any properties they own so that they can just sustain, so that they will stay afloat. So I assume that Nickelodeon is not wanting to use that as a publisher because their games might not come out. They might not actually get published if they put the development time into them um so it's a matter of finding the right developer and the right publisher and i'm sure that right now they're looking for that but i don't i would i would highly doubt that there's anything concrete in the works right now even though that show is enormously successful really wow so what do you do you have any uh ideas on what a good publisher would be um for a turtles game I mean, going back to Ubisoft would be sure. I mean, Ubisoft is enormous and successful. Yeah. I would love to see, like, my ideal future is that Ubisoft Montreal, who's the developer of Splinter Cell, uh, like, traditionally the old Splinter Cell games, they're doing Assassin's Creed, they did Far Cry 3. I would love to see that developer take a stab at some kind of four-player open-world thing with the Turtles. But, I mean, I, Ubisoft has, as of late has been moving away from licensed products and more toward their own properties. So I don't know that that's even something they would consider at this point. Hmm. Um, but at this point, I mean, so we're getting to the point at where we're at the end of this console. Like, this console generation is winding down. This is, in all likelihood, the last year of the Xbox 360, the last year of the PlayStation 3. We're going to move on to new consoles probably this fall. And it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Nickelodeon's been holding off on that to, to do something. With the with the new turtles, yeah. It, Not that you know a next gen turtles game is what everybody wants, but I mean, if you put a turtles game out on new hardware, kids are going to want the new hardware. I'm going to want the new hardware for a new turtles game, you know, among other things. But still, right. I mean, there's always the option of putting it out at a at a uh, you know something digital and then having it available for for you know current and and future. Content. Sure, like a live arcade PlayStation Network right. situation. Yeah. And the development on that is probably considerably cheaper than a big budget AAA release. Right. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they do. It, whether they, I mean, even what kind of game that they do, maybe they would go back to, because there's certainly a lot of uh, of old school Turtle fans working on this series. Um, maybe there's some old school fans that are that would be interested in maybe bringing back that uh, that that. 2D, 3D, um, arcade style that that uh, we all kind of grew up, yeah, with. So, um, I mean, it's not, it's not impossible to think video that. Game, please email mdyer at idg.com and spill all of your secrets. <laughs> it's not impossible <laughs> to think that something for the Wii U, uh, you know, would be in the works either. Oh yeah, I, you got to imagine that it would be it would be available for. <laughs> I think it's kind of impossible if you look at the 2013 release calendar for Wii U games. It's sad. <laughs> but I mean, it, Nickelodeon would obviously be looking at, at that as a family-friendly platform. Right. Yep, yep. With you know interesting capabilities, it's not you know you're right. It's not out of the realm of possibility. So um, what about? So here's that big question that I had for you, and, and it may not be that big of a question, but uh, what is, what is your favorite Turtles video game? Turtles in Time. Turtles in Time. Easily. Yep. Yes. 
Like, I have so many great memories of that game. My friend and I, would we would uh, go down to the local video store, which was like a mile from where we lived. We'd walk there and rent it at least once a week just because we loved it so much. And we both had Super Nintendos, and like it was like three bucks to rent the game, so why not? And we spent a sickening amount of money just playing that game over and over and over again. Yep. And by the time we just didn't have access to our Super Nintendos anymore, we would use an emulator on his, uh, my friend's PC to just play it cooperatively on a computer. Yeah, that's actually um, uh, I've I've got one on mine as well, and that's um, that's a it's a great way to to go back to it. My my uh, my Super Nintendo crapped out on me about uh, probably about three years ago, and uh, yeah, that's that's. I mean, I do have the options of you know the the reshelled version and the <clears throat> and the, uh, the the version that comes along with uh, with uh, Turtles Three. Um, Mutant Nightmare, but uh, that that Super Nintendo version was it had so many awesome features. Just even even do you guys remember how you could change the uh, the shading of the the turtle skins to make it either arcade version or comic book version? <laughs> like I don't. There's no. so many little details that were just so uh, so good, so good. Again, yeah, like same thing. We oh, even Darby and I. Put so much time into into that game. I mean, replayability, and it's interesting because it's still the same game, but yet we had no problem playing it over and over and over. Um, so uh, awesome, awesome. I I I, uh, I think we're we're definitely all in agreement. Uh, Turtles in Time, best uh, Turtles game ever. Uh, in case anyone's listening out there, <laughs> um, all four uh, of us. <laughs> <laughs> so um uh, Mitch you uh you able to uh hang out for a little bit longer? I am indeed. Awesome. All right, so let's uh let's go over uh some of the 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 recent turtle news. April O'Neil, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Let's see. I guess we can start with uh the the new Ninja Turtles movie. It's going to be starting up in April. Uh that was uh put out by uh at prod week and i i mean well okay so i should say that's what somebody on twitter said and, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone on twitter ended up you know Always jumping on it so and and nobody has said to the contrary so um you know i i retweeted it and and just said well here we go but um they're gonna be apparently filming in new york um so uh, I mean, this this was all s- supposed to start this past November, and then it, uh, you know the whole thing kind of got put on put on the back burner for a little while while they uh, uh, you know re- well at least they said that they were going to be re- re-evaluating the script and uh, essentially uh, to uh, let the internet kind of calm down for a little while. But um, well, didn't they have to recoup their losses too? Yeah, maybe I mean there were yeah there were people I mean they were they were set to go from everything that 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 I've heard so um, yeah it's it's uh it's, it's interesting I mean I I'm waiting to see I'm waiting to hear what you know what this movie is going to be like you know it, we'll <laughs> we'll be there opening night so um, uh, so anyway. Um, uh, along with that, uh, we did tweet out a story, um, about a, uh, a defunct fourth Turtles movie that was supposed to be released in the late nineties. Um, uh, let's see the, uh, it was, uh, comic book uh, released this story. Um, he, he got the, they had an interview with Kevin Eastman. And uh, they got a lot of uh, um, of uh, concept art for a uh, for a potential um, Turtles movie uh, that was was uh, going to be released after Turtles Three. I uh, think probably that just didn't get made because of well because of Turtles Three. Um, <laughs> what uh, um, Mitch thoughts on uh, Turtles Three? Tur- <laughs> <laughs> wasn't like the video game. <laughs> it probably would have been better if it was oh, based on the video game. The, the, the movie? Yeah. Yeah. That's the only Turtles movie that I look back on and kind of just get sad. Yeah. 
<laughs> that sounds about right. Um, so uh, you can check our uh, our uh, Twitter. We'll have a, a link in the uh, show notes to uh, to this, um, so you can check out this concept art. Um, the uh, the first DVD for the new Nick series is going to be um, looks to be released at the end of February. It's not going to be the entire the entire season. It's a, it's just going to be. I think they're going to release the the first season uh, split up into a couple DVDs. Now they they did this same um, they did this the same practice with the 2003 series. Um, and for the original series, in fact, when the, at, when they finally started releasing them on DVD, to where um, uh, you, they would, I, I don't know, they just, I think the price point is a little bit more attractive for for parents or something like that. But um, it, you got, I, I, see, as as, but see, for me, I, I'm gonna, I'd much rather have an entire season. I, I, I'd, yeah, this is a really gross way to to do out your DVDs. Yeah. It, it, it's there's one thing the 87 series showed us it's that wait for all of it to be released and then just buy the set in one big package see but the the advantage that that had was that it was completely done they weren't making it, it was anymore. completely done and i spent 40 bucks on it how much did you spend buying every single one of those dvds separately when they came out so moving yeah. on uh, <laughs> <laughs> um hey i did yeah. get a couple extra cool little things uh little figurines and stuff like that that uh, you know what you know what for the like 150 dollars more you probably spent go ahead have your little figurine <laughs> i'll go on ebay and buy it for five bucks uh yeah um it, what'll be interesting to see is if they do this with the 2003 series if they um i mean as we've seen so far the uh those that are in charge of the uh the turtles franchise right now are Kind of like to pretend that that series didn't exist. Um, Why? It's such a good series. I know. I know. Um, uh, what? What do you, Mitch? Did you watch the uh, the 2003 series at all? The the one that was on the uh... yeah, um, not for not the whole thing, but definitely the first probably half of it, which I I enjoyed it. It was fine. I actually I like the art more than anything else. I really love that artist. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, and in the the first half of the series was the was certainly the better half. Um, that said, in in one of the later seasons, they did. Uh, they told a story that is like my my ideal turtle story, where like they go into the future and everything is just bleak and ruined, and the turtles have kind of failed. Raphael has one arm. All of this really dark stuff happened. <laughs> you mean that uh, that, that episode really where? Defeat. I was gonna say that episode where Donatello killed Shredder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was like that. Had to bring it, it was up. bleak. It was cool. Yeah. I actually mentioned this before we even started. I was like, I was like, oh, I gotta remind Alex that Leo never killed the Utram Shredder, but Donatello did, and that when he went to the future, yep, uh-huh. that was Donnie. <laughs> so, what, Mikey would... had one arm. Wrath was missing an eye. That was awesome. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, Mikey had one arm. Yeah. Oh god, that was so cool. I and would... he could still take people with his one nunchuck. <laughs> I would absolutely love if they released. Uh, that series on on disc because it is very hard to find i mean you can you can get them you know online you can them <laughs> well you whatever. can watch them on youtube you can That's watch them I on did. youtube yeah they're they're out there if you know if you're digitally inclined but um i i would love to have those on on disc um uh they they there's just there's some so good stories in there like uh the ninja tribunal um that was my. That was awesome. I love that. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, that's all I had to say was that. So um, I've only <laughs> got a handful of them. The, the rest of them are very, very difficult to, to get your hands on. So, um, so anyway, um, moving on, um, we uh, we we got a uh, an interesting story that just hit the the web just a couple days ago. Not that um, interesting. Yesterday, right? I believe. Yeah. Um, so some, some G- juicy, uh, details of, of the, uh, no. upcoming season. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> At least. Uh, I don't know if juicy is the right word, but, um, it's, it's been, uh, released that, uh, uh. <laughs> comedy star. I don't know if you, if that's, that's the proper term, but, uh, Roseanne Barr, 
uh, has signed on to voice the character of Krang Prime. Um, oh, which... my God. This all makes so much sense. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Krang Prime, I, 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 maybe that will be what we have known as, you know, Krang from the original animated series. Um, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. I mean, if something's called Krang Prime, it it could be something totally different. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's interesting. (laughs) Thoughts? (laughs) I like Roseanne, man. People people bust their balls a lot. I, it's funny. Roseanne is as awesome. A, as a fat, grotesque blob that makes funny noises, I guess she's a perfect casting job. I, <laughs> wow. I, that's, just, that's <laughs> evil to even say. That's horrible. <laughs> Roseanne raised me, practically. Now, okay, so that's interesting. You're Spanish. So that doesn't count. That's a, <laughs> that's, a, that's a very interesting point in that – you think about when Roseanne was really um, <laughs> big. Um, that, <laughs> that, uh, wow. uh, you know, the time frame was at the same time when the uh, the turtles were at their peak. So I wonder if that had anything to play into this. Um, <laughs> Roseanne's a big fan, maybe. <laughs> maybe she's a big fan. Case, Who knows? She'd watch episodes. Um. Yeah. Big uh, it, it, She's it, doing what, pretty good with her psychic network. I don't know. Is that a real thing? Yeah. She. 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 Um. She was um, psychic. I guess. That's was cool. not anymore. Well, I mean, I'm assuming she still is. Like, she. She must have known she was going to get the job. So that's why she wow. went in. Wow. No, there you go. <laughs> For the casting call. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimate. <laughs> um, there it is. <laughs> in, in addition, um, we're gonna have uh. Kelly Hu um, from The Arrow and Cassandra Peterson, uh, the actress best known for portraying TV vampress Elvira. You guys remember oh, her? God. Yeah. Like, who the, who oh, the heck gosh. is she going to play? Um, <laughs> that doesn't scream family friendly Nickelodeon. I don't know what does. Well, uh, she is going to be voicing, um, Peterson, that is, going to be voicing a character named Miss Campbell a research scientist from the Worldwide Genome Project. Her character, who debuts in the February 9th episode titled The Alien Agenda, takes a particular interest in April O'Neil. Is she going to have, like, giant knockers? Well, <laughs> wait that's what see. we're all waiting to see. That's what we're all thinking. I'll be the one to ask. But that's now, what now who, Kelly Who, uh, I, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's, it's just spelled H-U. Um, yeah. She was in the X-Men movie, I think, too. Okay. All right, so she – now this sounds very uh, – because now I know who you're talking about. This sounds very appropriate. Was she, was, she be... was Deathstroke in the, in the, in the X-Men movie? That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's oh, right. my God. Is That's she right. play yeah. Karai? Yes. Yes. Awesome. That ma- now, that makes sense to me. Yeah. That I'm just glad awesome. that we're getting Karai finally. Yeah. And that's going to – she's going to be appearing in the episode entitled New Girl in Town. Appearing February uh, or airing February second. So, but she's oh not going to be connected to the Shredder, though, right? Isn't she just sort of like some street punk? Well, it all all the article no says is it's a rebellious teenager and martial arts expert it, who stirs should, up trouble. It'll probably tie back in. You got to imagine. Yeah. So, how long until this this series starts? City of War? Because I cannot wait for that uh, that arc. Well. If it, I mean, so far, first they have to introduce so Casey good, Jones. Yeah. That when they when the turtles first fight now, Mitch, I don't know if you noticed this, but when the turtles first fought uh, Shredder in this series, uh, did you notice all of the uh, the scenes that were straight off the uh, the first issue of the original comic book? It's the uh, the. So um, if, the way know, Shredder I'm not the series, so I don't know if I've actually seen them fight Shredder yet. Okay, uh, the, so, the way Shredder landed when he approach the turtles was right out of the comic there's all these like action shots like frozen every like he punches them and it freezes and every single time they do that it's straight out of there yeah so th- there's definitely some some that's brilliant this yeah. seems really good about that yeah well ryan i have the picture said the, the intro like, and the first you. frame or the first cover of the first series right like when they all strike a pose at the top of that building right? before it cuts Very to the logo like Very that's true. a great shot yep Yep. So there's definitely some some comic book fans, you know, making this making the series. So it uh, man, if they get to do uh, City of War, yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty epic. So I love it. 
Um, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, you know what I kind of like so far that they're doing too, and they're doing this in the IDW uh, comic series right now as well, is Krang and Shredder both have no idea of each other's existence. Right. But yeah. they both That's have cool. it out for the Turtles. Yeah, well, uh, as of right now, I mean, yeah, I, right I could now, definitely I'm see saying. them, you know, eventually joining, uh, you know, together to to take them on, which is interesting because you know that's how they were in the original animated series, but we never really got to see well, how, how that they happened. got together. Yeah, so yeah, this it could go so many places. Um, this this new series. Uh, I mean, we've talked about it. It's got its pros, it's got its cons, but uh, it's got a lot of potential. A lot of potential. Um, so, uh, in the last uh, bit of news um, that we've got is uh, that there's going to be um, a, a, a convention out in uh, California. Uh, it's called PowerCon. And uh, there's going to be a uh, actually a... Um, a turtle uh, centric portion of this, of this convention. Uh, it's going to be, uh, I think in September, September of uh, 2013. Um, it's going to be in, let's see, uh, Torrance, T O R R A N C, Torrance, California. Um, do you know where, where that is? That? Mitch? Sure. Okay. So, um, yeah, I have it, no idea. Yeah, Dude, I'm trying yeah. to get to San Francisco from where I live. <laughs> um it's uh we've got a a link um talking about it it's uh, uh the power dash com and uh yeah they're gonna have a uh a, a turtle centric uh portion of this convention it's also got stuff like uh yeah, um he man masters the universe uh she ra thundercat you know the uh the eighties uh um do you love the eighties con yeah right pretty much um so uh um, yeah, so um, we'll, we'll put a, a link to that in the show notes as well. So, um, and that's all the news we got. So, uh, I, I'm I'm so happy to live in a world where there is turtles news, though. Isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's nice. It, it's it's a, it's a it's a as we've said before on this podcast, it is a great time to be a turtles fan. It is. Uh, there's a lot of promise. A lot of things coming up. Um, I mean, with the the animated series, with the the upcoming movie, with the, the you get, uh, eventual video game, which we know will come, it will come. Oh, yeah. It's just a matter. There's of too much money it. sitting on the table with that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thanks. Uh, uh, I want to say thanks to all our listeners for, for listening uh, into another episode of the Turtle Power Podcast, an epic episode of the Turtle Power Podcast, because of our special guest, Mitchie D, Mitch Dyer, the uh, the <laughs> the uh, the Canadian sensation. The uh, <laughs> uh-huh. um, it, thank you so much for for coming on. Um, hey man, anytime. This is fun. Thanks for uh, having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, fans, uh, you can. You can catch uh, Mitch on any of the uh, the, the great uh, IGN podcast that he's uh, on, including um, uh, let's see, Game Scoop. Uh, you've got your your. Uh, oh, see, I always want to call it Three Red Lights, even though I know it's not Three Red Lights anymore. Nope. <laughs> podcast Red Lights. Dead bear. Sorry. Um, uh, podcast Lock. That's the Xbox centric uh, podcast on uh, IGN. And uh, let's see, are you on any others? Um, sometimes, I guess. I mean, we're, it's weird because we're starting to do more and more video content and less and less podcasts. So we're kind of, we're migrating over to that and we're doing a lot more video commentaries and a lot more video shows and video quick hits and stuff like that. So, I mean, every day we're doing something. Absolutely. Uh, mm-hmm. You guys put out a ton of content over there. No doubt about it. Um, uh, you guys can follow uh, Mitch um, on Twitter at Mitchie D. You can follow uh, the, the podcast at TMNT Podcast. Follow me, Ryan, at Fig Don Pat. Uh, you can follow Alex at, uh, at A Rodriguez2005. Uh, follow Darby at, at Lobo DTP. Um, 
that's a terrible name. Who um, rapped that one? <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, subscribe, rate us on iTunes, like us on Facebook. Uh, we don't really do a whole lot on Facebook. We just kind of forward everything over from Twitter. But um, And uh, if you'd like to get a hold of us, um, turtlepowerpodcast at gmail.com. And we always have to have our song of the week. Our song of the show, I think it's more appropriate. Uh, we've got this is one I've been saving onto for a long time. This is a uh, a uh, OC remix, uh, Overclock. Yes. Remix. So I was gonna say, God, I hope it's an OC remix. <laughs> um, uh, six to sounds and Zircon, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for Subterranean Kamikaze. I uh, love this song. This is uh, I should I should just wake up to this song every day. Um, <laughs> So uh, thank you so much to everybody for uh, for listening. Uh, once again, thanks to uh, to Mitch Dyer for uh, for joining us, and uh, we are signing out. <laughs>
Hey, Ryan here once again. Um, we've actually got a little bit of a bonus here at the end of the show. Um, we had uh, Darby, Alex, and I, that is, had a uh, bit more discussion on the uh, first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game. And uh, I feel like I'd be, I'd be uh, doing a disservice to our fans and our listeners by not uh, providing this uh, for you all. So uh, enjoy. Oh, and by the way, did you know that the Konami code actually works for some of the old Turtles video games? Yeah, I'll include a link to, or you can just Google it. Um, actually, even on Wikipedia, it has a list of Konami game codes, and uh, the Turtles are in there. So uh, if you do go back and play some of these older games, try out that Konami code. That might help you out. Please, please, uh-huh. a moment to reflect. Uh-huh. Ah. Uh, I don't know. Alex just did a a article on this subject. I think he should know the word to use for it. I don't even remember what I wrote, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> it's okay. I, I didn't. I don't remember what you wrote either. <laughs> well, we'll have a a link to uh, Alex's article uh, up in the show notes. But the I'm going to first... need a few more beers before we start talking about the first game. <laughs> uh, the first. Uh, Ninja Turtles video game uh, debuted on the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, I guess uh, February 1st, 1989 is a video game that definitely lives in infamy. Uh, A game that was so hard to beat. Oh, and oh my goodness. I I literally had nightmares just listening to the beep when your health is low yep. and you start getting that beep. I had nightmares. That about high it. pitch beep. Oh, and it won't stop. Even if you switch characters, it doesn't stop. That's because you switch to a new character and that new character is like low on life as well. So that it still wants like, <laughs> Oh God. Oh man. It was a great look. You know what though? For the, it, no, it, no, it, you can't game. even say it was a good game. No, yeah. it wasn't. It, is, it, it wasn't my, a good game. No. It wouldn't yeah, it was a- last so long in in the minds of fans uh, if it, it weren't a good game. It lasts so long for the wrong reasons, though. It lasts so long for being an impossibly hard game for bosses not even really attacking you. You know, the first boss is Bebop, who just runs into a wall, you know, while you just stand behind him and wail on him until he dies. Or Leatherface shows up. Not Leatherhead, Leatherface with a face. chainsaw shows up it's it 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 lives on but for the wrong reasons and you know this i disagree i I thought it was a great game your disagreement is invalid because i'm right (laughs) absolutely not his his opinion is invalid (laughs) Uh, fine fine give me give me no legit give me five legit good things about this game uh Uh, the the cover the cover Legit. is one. Oh. <laughs> the cover um, is amazing. The, the ability, the ability to switch out turtles at will, I think, yes. is awesome. That okay. is, and that you can't do that in in any of those older games. That was definitely something that was um, just specific to that game. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, there's I, and something that was totally necessary to beat the underwater level. Yeah. Uh, hey, the underwater level. Let's just let's just say it right now. Raphael, sacrificial lamb of that entire game. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Because well, he, he had the smallest he weapon. Raphael in this game. Yeah, the most, he is the sacrificial lamb of that entire game. When you go into the water level, you go in as Raphael. That's no, it. no, 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 no. You don't go in as Raphael. You go in. You change to Raphael when you're going through that labyrinth of electric seaweed. That's when you change to Raphael. That is when you change to him. I definitely think Donatello was the the best turtle to use in every game. That's in every game. He's the best to use <laughs> in every game. Um, that, that, I got more to talk about that. I got more to say about that. But uh, in that game for sure. So, in every oh, yeah, dude, oh, dude, okay, okay. I, I got an argument for that. But anyway, yeah, the the the, later, the cover right talk about the first game. The cover has them with all the the, uh, all the red right. bandanas. Which, um, you know, the they game don't... itself doesn't. Right. And at the time, pretty much everyone that, you know, 
every child, I mean, we've talked about this in the past, but, um, you know, didn't know about the comic books, didn't know about the fact that they all had red bandanas and just knew about the animated series and couldn't just that, that cover was just so amazing because they, they look so different. Mm -hmm. It was, it was just so, uh, it just uh, it has the the mod that guess the the animated series logo, but it had the the red bandana turtles. So I can't help but notice that Alex stopped after one good thing about that game. Oh well, you guys are still talking about it. And then the Ryan was also pointing something out there that, that he thought was good about that game as well, which just happened. To be I don't think that was a good thing. I think that was a misleading aspect of that game. I think it was, it was misleading, misleading at all. So misleading. They all had red, and then they weren't red in the game. Yeah, but everybody who bought the game, yep. for the majority, yep. already knew the turtles had different colors. I disagree, because Ryan just said, you know, for the most part, kids didn't read the comics or didn't understand it. So well, it was no, no, I, I, no, I'm talking about, like, like different, as, as in the blue and the orange and the purple. So I, I can understand it being misleading as far as the, the cover with them all red, but... I don't think so. I, I mean, think I, nobody was I, nobody was like, I don't understand. It was right. just it just no looked kid, so amazing. Look, as, it just looked so as different. A, as a kid, I wasn't looking at it and saying, "What what the crap, man? They got red band." No, I was just putting it into into my Nintendo and playing. Like I wasn't focusing on the cover when I was a kid. I don't think any of us were. If you were, then go shoot. The only reason I remember what the cover looks like is because Ryan had a poster of it in his room. I did. Awesome. That's I did. The only reason I remember what the cover of that video game looks like. Amazing. I, I think the graphics were great on it too. <laughs> I do. And now you got to go back to that time, you know, to to compare. It's it, it is it was pretty good for the time. Not and even man, like you you start off and you have like that overhead shot of new of what's supposed to be New York City. Tell me you didn't die. Tell me you didn't die in the first five seconds when that steamroller came right at you and you're like, what is that? And it killed your first turtle. Right. Which is I mean, really yeah, yeah, you, you, that, that that sucked. But I mean, you you learn the map eventually, right. and the, abil and the, and the you, ability and the ability to favorite game for the first five seconds, and you've already lost your favorite turtle. So what? So you learn. <laughs> so you learn, and then the the element of being able to switch from, from side scroller to over the top, back and forth. Alex lost his turtle, not you, Ryan. This is definitely a game where you had to play over and over and over to be able to beat. Yes. This is not an easy game. This was not a modern game. This was a game of its, uh, you know, at the time. And there were people that beat it. It wasn't in, impossible. There are people game. on YouTube who can beat the game in less than 10 minutes, and they make me feel so awful at video games. <laughs> they really do. I still don't think we're doing the first game enough justice if we're already moving on from the first game. Well, we've well, got a lot like to cover. Games to cover. <laughs> but the first game was just such an epic it's such an epic, you know, it's so burned into your freaking skull and your past. Sure, but so is the arcade game. I but mean, it there's... was such a bad game. It was so bad. Why, why, why is it bad? None of the villains, none of the random bad guys are actually bad guys from the, from the show or, or the, but comics. you just said there's Bebop and Rocksteady, right? Well, they're not I said none of the, the none, none of the other, yeah, the boss is fine, but all the other ones that you kill, or Leatherface, um, are in there. The fact that they kept respawning. There's mousers and there's foot soldiers and they no, just there's, they just don't look very good. <laughs> or they don't show up until the very end. Like the last level, a mouser shows up and it's a but that, giant. That, that's just classic NES, man. Every yeah. NES side scroller was completely. It was just like vomit on the screen because it was just <laughs> like fifty different things coming at you at once, and none of them looked the same. There were just a bunch and of I, random pixels. But then they respawn. How many? You know, you know. There are many times in that game where you have to. You go through the level, and then you have to go back through the level because you didn't jump right. Or something knocked you down onto the lower platforms. You had to go all the sure. way back through that level again, and all those bad guys were still there. Yeah, and yet, the pizza that you depended on to live wasn't there anymore. It was a hard game. It required yeah, it you to be perfect. Good. You know, it, it it's it's not a modern game where you you know. At least it had checkpoints, though. I'll give uh, it that. It had levels. It had levels. If you die well, doing the yeah. water level, no. well, not yeah. I guess levels would what, be what, more to accurate. Me, but... what, to me, one of the most infamous, infamous like lines in all of video game history is April O'Neil saying, 
don't let Shredder destroy the dam. You have my support. <laughs> you know what? Uh, you know what? Good her support does that game. No, it does nothing for you. You're getting fired up. <laughs> okay, there. I I will counter with this. Uh, Nintendo Power, the video game magazine, uh, the exist. only video game magazine that really existed at the time. But it doesn't exist anymore? Yes. Um, 1989 Game of the Year was the original Ninja Turtles. So. Yeah, I, think, I think the only game it went up against was like the Jekyll and Hyde game. Oh, come on. <laughs> There are so huh. many games Don't coming you, out. Let's not talk about the Jekyll and Hyde game. <laughs> Just stop it right now. That game was so it's, awful. That's what I'm saying. That, that was their competition that year. You know, 1989 uh. game of the year. Uh, Ninja Turtles, Jekyll and Hyde. I'm sure I'm getting my years wrong completely as well. Or like Castlevania 2. You know, like those were the only competitions they had back then. Come on now. The, there were like 100 games coming out a year at that, and they at were, that point. There were 100 games coming out a year. That you know that point here, but we could only like four off the top of our heads. So, series wise, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I, I think you're being a little too hard on it. I guess that's all. <laughs> um, so you compare that to the arcade game, and and you like. I assume you enjoyed the arcade game much more. Oh yeah, uh, find me one person who legitimately is not crazy who likes the first game better than the arcade game. Well, now, see, that's what I'm saying. You don't have to compare the two. What uh, what, uh, what I'm saying is that you can enjoy both of them for two different reasons. No, because you can't enjoy the first game at all. <laughs> uh, lost, lost cause, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 would, I would pretty just... I mean, even though it did go up against Golden Axe that year and it went up against, you know, Castlevania and... You know, Castlevania 2 as well. I mean, all pretty decent games. Castlevania 2 was like one of the worst video games ever. You can't even, you can't even throw that in the list. It's so what one movie? Of the worst games ever. Oh, oh Castle- yeah, Castlevania. Yeah. Ooh. Castlevania 2 was, was, it wasn't, it wasn't horrible. Yeah, it was I mean, horrible, but that has nothing to do with the Turtles game. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It went up against all these games. So it's not like there were no games that came out that year. There was, there was a lot of, uh. Booyakasha! Damn it. Ah, uh, there it is. Uh, <laughs> Booyakasha! Uh, that's that's how I feel about that game. Booyaka Sha. Right um, you know, if you think about the first Ninja Turtles game. Yeah, Booyaka Sha. So Grady, much Booyaka. Gradius Steve 3 came out that year. Giant plate with Booyaka Sha on it. Stall <laughs> Booyaka Sha. Yeah, everywhere. Booyaka Sha everywhere. The only saving grace of that entire game was Donatello. So, uh, there's had to have been some other games that came out in 1989. Tetris. Tetris. That's a pretty good game, Darby. Tetris for the Game Boy. Not even the Tet- original Tetris. Tetris was, was the Tetris best the on the Game Boy. Oh, uh, just the Game Boy. Tommy Lasorda's Baseball. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Oh. Moonwalker. Better game than the Ninja Turtles. Straight up. <laughs> I remember I'm sorry. I, I am I am on a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle podcast. And if somebody was like, hey, Darby, do you want to play the original Ninja Turtles game or Michael Jackson's Moonwalker right now? Uh, dude, like, I'm 999 million times out of all those other Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Taking it every single time. <laughs> the one time I don't answer Michael Jackson's Moonwalker is because I'm unconscious. Yeah, or drunk. Now, um, Alex, in your article, you do talk about how beating the the underwater level was an it was an amazing, amazing accomplishment. Well, think think about think of, think of it. You know how, how everybody knows how hard it is. So to accomplish that, I mean, I, that's one of the things that the game gives you. It's this sense of accomplishment. Once you actually beat it, I mean, yeah, then you have to go through this whole another level and die another you know two hundred and fifty times, but. You just feel because so all accomplished. the turtles are dead from the water level. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't they? Don't, didn't their life eventually like re- no. refill up? No, not until you die out and start over. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. They don't come to... back, man. They don't heal when you're like resting them. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't happen. But all your turtles are dead except for Donatello when you're done with the water level. And then yeah, and then you're stuck with just Donatello for like like Alex said, the last level that next level where you die like a million times after that. Yep. Yeah, it was a tough game. It was a tough game. 